everyone, I'm Karen and I'm the Wild Bird Buyer here at Farm and Pet Place. Now today I just wanted to chat to you briefly about an issue you may have seen in the press over the last few weeks um, and this is the rapid spread of disease amongst our garden wild birds. Now the British Trust of Ornithology have done some research into this and found that it's mainly coming from bird tables um, and feeders uh, because you get such a large congregation of birds in one place. And let's be honest, in the wild that wouldn't normally happen. You wouldn't normally have sort of up to 10 species of birds in your garden at the same time. Now the three most common UK diseases in wild birds are avian pox, canker and salmonella. So just briefly, avian pox is a viral skin condition. Typically you'd see uh, large wart-like growths on the bird's head, um, but also you can see them on the wings and other parts of the body. Really quite nasty. Um, canker is a digestive issue, so typically you'd see that in finches, pigeons and doves and what happens is the bird gets lesions in its throat and as the disease progresses it gets harder and harder for them to feed. Um, and unfortunately, unlike avian pox with canker, the birds are unlikely to survive. Now salmonella, of course, you will have heard of. Um, it's a bacterial infection and in wild birds it's usually spread by contaminated droppings. Therefore, it usually affects flocking ground feeders such as green finches and house sparrows. The symptoms of salmonella are not immediately obvious in wild birds. You'd usually see that they might be, appear a bit lethargic, they might hang around on the ground and be reluctant to move away from the feeder even when there's danger nearby. Um, as you know, salmonella can also be passed to humans, so even more reason to be really diligent with practicing good feeder hygiene. The infections from all these diseases can be spread in a number of ways, usually by contaminated surfaces, so in case of feeders, it's on perches, very easily spread, and um, similarly bird baths through contamination of the drinking water, as well as biting insects, and even during the breeding season, and the mother would regurgitate food. Um, obviously we can't control all of these factors, but we certainly can take steps to try and help halt the disease by addressing some of them. Now the number one action you can take is by regular and effective cleaning of all of your wild bird feeders, tables, nest boxes and bird baths with a suitable cleaner such as this and a cleaning brush like this one. Now we sell these in our stores and if you're ever unsure you can phone or pop in and our member of staff will be more than happy to help you. So I've got a quick demonstration to show you how I go about cleaning my wild bird feeders at home. Now, here's to our prepared earlier. Sadly these have actually been a bit neglected and are in urgent need of a clean, as you can see from this one. basically a breeding ground for bacteria in the bottom of there, so really important that we do clean these thoroughly. Now what I've already done is actually tip this upside down just to get most of the debris and left eaten food out of there. Um, what I'm left with is just really a bit of surface sort of muck. So this is where the spray comes in. So I'd actually spray this liberally right inside through some of the ports By the way, I've been doing this really, you want to be looking at ideally every week, if not every fortnight, really just to make sure that we are halting the spread of disease. So then, take said cleaning brush and you can just see it's quite easy to really get into the bottom of there. Already I can see the muck starting to loosen. Already. After we've done a bit of that, I'd probably just leave it. All I've got in here is just hot water. Um, as I said, everything you already, sort of the, the agents that are working to clean it are already in here. So I'll just leave that in hot water to soak for a bit. If there's any bits you can't get to, I do invest in a bit of a scourer. So with this feeder here, this, by the way, is a squirrel buster. Brilliant if you do have a squirrel problem, most of us do. Or even big birds like crows and pigeons. Um, you'll see these on our website or in our stores as well. 
works by the bird's quite heavy so the ports close off when it does attempt to feed. Oh, I've digressed. So this, yeah, this is another one that's got quite a bit of residue in the bottom here. Um, you can try with the brush. So many different types of feeders, and you see all these ones here. You just might need to use a combination of scourer or just a bit of a cleaning pad alongside the cleaning brush for some of these. And again, once I've gone through this, I'll just leave that to soak in hot water for a bit before putting it all back together. So I've left these to soak for a while. What I do now is just give them a final brush um, with this or with a cleaning pad just to get rid of any leftover residue. And then I'd leave them to air dry before refilling them with food and putting them back out in the garden. So just to reiterate, the reason I'm using this over just plain hot water or even with something like bleach is because it's odourless, non-toxic, perfectly safe for wild birds and of course kills all the bacteria that I mentioned earlier. Now as you can see, I've got, we've got a range of feeders here, all easily cleaned. Um, I mean, even something like this, the cleaning brush will fit through. So this here, we've got a suet log feeder. Suet does tend to leave a bit of a residue on feeders, so it, you know, it is important that you clean it properly. I've also got here, <coughs> now this feeder, a bit of a beast, heavy duty, um, really tough actually so squirrels you know, struggle to damage something like this. Now a plus point of this particular feeder is it's easy clean, very easy clean in fact. So what we do with this is literally screw off the base, pull the pin, which I don't know if you can just see, it's a pin that runs sort of through the middle of the feeder. We pull that out. These here just pull out. Sounds worse than it is. And then, as you can see, we've got really just left with a clear tube here. Really, really easy to clean with the brush. So, sometimes it is worth paying a bit extra for a feeder that is super easy to clean. Other ways you can help stop the spread of disease is try to have as many locations in your garden with different feeders as possible. Therefore you don't get a great big build up of mess, droppings, all in one area. And also you know, the birds, they'll be more spread out if you've got different feeding stations in the garden. Um, along with this, try and think about where you're actually placing them. I mean, if you've got a bird table, you don't want it under a bird branch, a favourite perching branch, where you are going to get a continuous mess landing on the table and you're going to have to constantly be keeping it clean um, and as I've said droppings do contribute to a salmonella um, transference between different species. Another thing you can do is regularly clean your bird baths or any containers that are holding water. Um, if you do clean them again make sure you use something like this, a specific wild bird spray um, and refresh them regularly with clean water. Again a favourite place that droppings tend to accumulate. Lastly, and probably most importantly, is to practice good personal hygiene. Not you know, personally, but in terms of wild bird feeder cleaning. So always wash everything outside rather than inside the house so you're not bringing bacteria into the house. If you do use any utensils, obviously keep them outside or something like a scourer and throw it away. Um, you can choose to wear gloves if you like and when you finish, really thoroughly wash your hands and forearms just to make sure everything is as clean as can be. Okay, so a quick run through the feeders that you may have seen next to me today and some of the ones that I've taken apart for cleaning. So here, this is a ring pull feeder. Um, good side, size, holds plenty of seed, um, very strong and as you see, really easily taken apart for cleaning. And the other one I used is a squirrel buster. It is in pieces, but 
I think you saw it earlier, um, excellent for keeping squirrels away and as well as bigger birds. One of the few things that actually works against them, to be honest. We've also got here a suet pellet and mealworm feeder. Mealworms, brilliant and increasing in popularity, full of protein, and robins and blackbirds just love them. Um, so that's this. So for this one, top literally just lifts off. Really easy to get in there to clean. We've also got the suet log feeder. So you normally put suet logs at about so sort of side, side. In there, we've got all sorts of different flavours, very popular, uh, and they also act like perches. Um, excellent thing to have in the garden. We've got here a heavy duty seed feeder, another one. So this one, the top actually locks, because again, those crafty squirrels and bigger birds can sometimes get in quite easily. So this one, it locks. Once it's cleaning up, they can't get in. Um, easily taken apart again, there's a pin in the middle that just pulls out. If you're looking for something for better value, or just uh, it's going to be popular all day long, is this. This is just a standard sort of nut feeder, easily taken apart, top just comes off. Um, yeah, I'm filled with peanuts or split peanuts. And a really heavy duty piece of kit here, this is another squirrel proof um, peanut feeder this time. So with this one, just clips come off. You see there, just take the clips off and easy to, re easy to refill, easy to clean. Before I go, just to mention, do remember we're in currently what's known as the hungry gap. So this is a period for wild birds between February to April where natural resources of food such as winter berries and things are starting to run out but before the spring insects are starting to emerge. So a really crucial time to keep feeding them. We've got them through the harshest winter, we don't want to be stopping now especially before breeding season. So you want to be looking at things like sunflower hearts, really rich in oil, a great staple this time of year. Um, peanuts, of course, high in fat and a good quality seed mix, such as our Dr. Green Supreme, will keep them going through to breeding season. If you've stayed with me this far, thank you very much and I'll see you.